Hello and welcome to a Hearts Fine 4 tutorial. My name is Hydronum and I intend on going through Italy to give you guys the basics. Now I will be going through from the 1936 save, historical focus, basic things like that to make sure that you guys at home can follow along if you're so inclined. Now we're going to start with first choosing a game. So first thing we want to do is go into new game. We're going to start in the 1936 start. There's a reason for this. We can go jump into World War II immediately, but I'd rather go over the basics in a position where you're not under immediate threat. So we select scenario. We are going to go through as Italy. Very, very good country for learning the uh, game. You start at war, but not in a war that you have any hope of losing. So it is absolutely perfect. So yeah, you select Italy, select a country, it'll take you to this map. Now, just because you've said select a country on the previous one doesn't mean you can't just choose another country here and decide to play as them. But for the moment, we're going to stay as Italy. We could choose any of the countries you see there, quite happily. But like I said, we're going to be Italy. Now, we are going to be going on regular difficulty. Recruit will make it easier. You'll get a far better production. You'll research things faster and your political power will just be through the roof. I'll go over what all of that means later. But for now, we're just going to be sitting on regular. No bonuses for us. No bonuses for the AI. Now, Iron Man mode. This will create a save file that will automatically update relatively often. You only have the one save file. You essentially cannot go back and change um, things that you do. Say you declare a war and you didn't mean to start it, well, you're going to have to live with it at that point. Whereas uh, we are not going to be doing that right now, we're going through to learn, and I intend on making save files of which you guys can play along with. So we're just going to go with um, Iron Man off, and we're going to have historical AI focuses on. This will mean that Give or take a couple of months, World War II should start around the time it originally did. It also means that, well, most likely um, nations such as Germany will begin doing what they do when they did. It's pretty simple. You'll see down here that there's a trophy with a cross through it. You can't get achievements unless you're in Iron Man mode and regular difficulty or higher. So you can get it on regular, you can get it on veteran, but you can't get it on recruit. Not at all. So yeah, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, we start as one of the richer nations. Italy. Now, their national unity isn't amazing, but there are different things that we can go over. National unity is your country's willingness to fight on while enemies are invading your territory. If they control over 65% of our country, based, by, uh, based around victory points and land, then we will capitulate, which is we wave the white flag like France did nice and early in the war. Now, we've also got a few other things up here. We've also got political power. I'll go into more detail with that later. But for now, you can see that it increases two per day, which is all well and good. You've got here, manpower. As you can see, we've got about 700,000 people, which can be in an army, division, army, navy, air force, doesn't matter. It can, get, uh, it can go in any of those, but are currently not. If you hover over, like I've done here, you can see the free manpower, as well as the breakdown of how many men are in your army. As you can see, we've got about 250,000. In the Air Force, about 20,000 of them, and in the Navy, about 60,000. So, total manpower is about 1.03 million. You can see further breakdowns as well, as well as the monthly growth down the bottom. We can increase the amount of manpower we've got through different laws and different things, so we'll get into that as it becomes more important later. Next to that, we've got factories. If you hover over, it gives you a breakdown of uh, the factories, what's in use, what's not. I'll go into that more soon. For now, we'll just keep going through the interface. Over here, you've got the various different types of experience. You've got Army, Navy, and Air Force experience, respectively. I'll go over that in much more detail later, but you generate it by having an advisor or by being involved in that type of conflict, uh, combat. For instance, army divisions fighting will give army experience, but not any of the others, etc. 
they're used usually to improve different things. Like I said, I'll go over it in more detail later. And over here we've got convoys. This allows us to supply our troops abroad or trade for goods overseas. Having a reasonable number of these is important. Alright, we've got here a bunch of other buttons. I'll go over them in more detail as we go through. We've got over here the pause as well as the speed. It's broken down into five little nodules. Speed 1 is the slowest, speed 5 the fastest. You increase by pressing the plus on the keyboard or clicking here. Or you decrease by hitting minus on the keyboard or clicking here. Alright, you've got different overviews here. Army, Navy, Air Force. Not going to go into them immediately. There really isn't much of a point. Not yet. It's an easy way to, say, select everyone to gather them all in one place, but I don't find too much use of it otherwise. Over here we've got World Tension. Uh, this is a number that uh, scales up over time, does naturally tick down, but it's not going to come into play too much for us yet. Different things will increase it, and different things become available to different people at different points on that. It can go higher than 100, and if you get it sufficiently high enough, you get it to loop around, but at that point it doesn't matter. Alright, what else do we have? Uh, we've got over here the different map modes. You've essentially got three here. Uh, default, Navy, and Air Force. If you click on an airfield, this one will pop up. Rather annoying, but if you just remember that you can quickly tap F1 or hit the little soldier here and you'll go back to your default map mode. Trust me, it happens a lot. Don't fret. You shouldn't scare you too much. If you do end up clicking on naval port, I believe this one pops up, which is the naval one. It's all well and good. Just click on the little default man and you'll be back in on the default face nice and quick. Alright, down the side you do have a few other things, we'll go into them in more detail later, but just quickly, you've got supply areas, how much supply is in an area and how much it can support. For instance, this can support up to 107 and it uses 3. The number on the left is how much it uses, the number on the right is how much it supports. It's very straightforward, you'll get the hang of it as you look at it more. Alright, this is the states map mode. Honestly, I don't think I've ever actually used that at all. Resistance map mode, not important until you're taking over territory. Resource map mode, this is one you'll probably want to look at when thinking about who to attack and where to take and all of that. But you can see the breakdown of the materials produced by your country. Or by the enemy's country. Got the diplomacy. This is your relations with people. It's essentially an easy way to see who's at war with who. By clicking on them, you can uh, see who is warring who. Pretty easy. Now, we've also got factions map mode. As you can see, the breakdown here, we've got common turn, axis, and allies. It's very simple. If you've got other factions, then they'll show up there. Alright, one last thing. Down here, we've got day-night cycle. We've got unit um, icon color, I'll go over that later, and allied battle plans. Since we're not allied to anybody, that's going to be completely a waste of time for us. But for now, I'm going to turn off the day-night cycle just because I prefer it not being on. Okay, I should probably show what that is. Um, you can see here that there is the line that shows where the light is reaching. If I take it off, everything is essentially in day all the time. But day and night still tick by as normal. You just don't visibly see it on the map. That's all. Okay, so that should be the basics of the interface and what you're real dealing with. Now, we've got a lot of these things here. These are the alerts. These are what we're going to deal with first before we get into any of the nitty gritty combat. First one, which is probably the most important one, is research. If we click this, it'll open up the research tab. This is this button here for later reference. Now, we've got four research slots, the slots which is a lot. Most countries start for, uh, with between two and four, depending on where in the world they are and how technologically advanced they are. Four is a lot. Now, if you click on it, 
you'll have access to pages like this. This is the, uh, the uh, this is the tech page. You can see here the year that it's um, recommended that uh, these be researched. If you try to research them beforehand, you'll get a penalty, which means it'll uh, be researched slower. If you do it late, it doesn't give you a bonus. And you can also see other little bonuses that you'll get later um, shown about up in this corner. For now, what we're going to do is have a quick look at these. We've got here first, you've got the infantry tab. This covers all of your infantry types. It's got your mountaineers, it's got your paratroopers, it's got your standard infantry, it's got your motorized and mechanized, so trucks as well as half trucks and mostly hard shelled um, transport, troop transport stuff. You've also got different weapon types, guns, and all that. That's what this page goes over. Next one over, we've got support battalions. These are the things that improve your um, troops, your different battalions, while keeping it about the same size. I'll go over that in a lot more detail when I go over unit um, size, placement, and width. That comes in a little bit. Next one is armor. We've got different types of armor. You've got light armor down here, heavy armor, medium, super heavy, that type of stuff. It's just your different types of tanks and tank variants. Next tab, fourth one is artillery. This is stuff like your anti-tank, your actual artillery, your anti-air. This is the stuff that goes in your battalions to make them punch harder. They're pretty pretty good so you'll want to be keeping mostly up to date on artillery just for future reference here is the land doctrine now there's four different trees you choose one tree and you go down it we're going to be working with the default tree even though I'm not really a fan of it we already start with one point in it so changing is going to be expensive Though there is a bug, I'm not going to go into it at the moment, but it does allow you to swap immediately from, say, this one here to completing the first one here. So you essentially waste no time switching between one of these. Alright, so that's the basics of the land-based people, the infantry and the grunts who fight. Up next we've got our navy. This is a breakdown of the ships that you can research, ship types, as well as amphibious landing technologies. A lot of people do not notice this stuff down the bottom when they're first um, going through. You've got to scroll all the way to the bottom and then you've got the transport tech. This allows you to invade with people. I'll be going over this later, but for now, it's fine. You start out with the first one researched as Italy, but not all countries have it researched to begin with. So keep that in mind if you're going to play a smaller nation, but for now, we should be fine. Next one over is our, is our naval doctrine. We've got where our types of um, naval doctrine, as you can see, we've already got one. But this is how our fleets will interact with combat. You can see the different bonuses. For instance, if you were to go down here, you'd uh, improve your submarines. Go down here, you'd be improving your destroyers. Go down here, your big ships will fight even harder. Which is all good. We'll probably be going down that later, but for now, we can leave it be. Alright, next one over, we go into our aircraft. There's several types of aircraft, effectively. There's fighters, close air support, naval bombers, tactical bombers, and strategic bombers. That's it. Um, it's very simple. Close air support, they're the, uh, they're the planes that come in and shoot up enemy troops when your troops are fighting them. The fighters, they fight other planes in the sky. You've got your naval bombers, which bomb ships. You've got your tactical bombers, which bomb different... Uh, what's the difference between attack and strike? Right, strategic bombers um, smash things like... Uh, fortresses, infrastructure, and other such things, as well as being able to carry nuclear warheads. Tactical bombers will bomb factories and other such stuff, as well as assisting with some troop bombing. Air Doctrine, this is where you improve your um, air 
fighters and bombers and the like so that they perform more towards the task you want. As you can see, we don't start with any of them research, we can go down any of the trees we like, but for now we're going to leave it be. Next one, we are on to stuff that isn't directly related to warfare, but modifies warfare in some way. Here we've got our engineering. This is mostly electronical engi uh, electronic engineering, but this is the stuff that uh, essentially improves your research time or lets you see things or develop nukes. What we're going to be doing first is, well, we're going to be grabbing this one because it lowers research time. This is the first one in electronical engineering, electronic engineering, and it's electronic mechanical engineering. Nice and quick, 99 days, and it will increase our research speed by, uh, decrease our research time by 2%, which is awesome. Now, just click on the next one, it'll take you back to the page. Now, you can see here that nukes are expected to be begun with the atomic research at about 1940. We'll probably get into that later, but for now, we're not even going to worry about it. Now, let's move on to industry. This stuff is going to be important. This is how much your factories can output as well as how fast they can build. Now, the first one on the production here increases your production efficiency by 5%. This means that as it ticks up, you've got an efficiency between 0 and 100% in your factories. By default, it's 50. So you produce 50 of the possible amount. Say the amount is 100, the, if your production efficiency is only at 50%, you only produce 50. Um, so if we increase the, the cap, then the cap goes to 55 and the production slowly ticks up to 55, which is, will be the new maximum. So we're gonna begin by researching that as well. Now, construction. We've got over here a research construction speed plus 10%. This means that you'll get 10% as much build for every day for every factory. So we'll be going over what the factories will be doing when I get to the factories tab, but this is very good for building things faster for obvious reasons. So we're also gonna be grabbing that. Now, finally, synthetic oil. This is very useful for those who are relatively strapped for um, oil and rubber, which the Axis usually are. Italy and Germany in particular end up starved for it if things go historical, which they sometimes usually do. So if we research this, we can begin building synthetic oil plants in our things that will generate us some oil and some rubber, which is very, very useful for building things like planes or tanks and the like. For now, we are going to ignore that. We're actually going to go back to the artillery and we are going to research this one here. Interwar artillery. This will give every single artillery regiment that we've got, the artillery themselves will do 10% extra soft attack. I'll explain what that is when I go into units and the like. All right, so we'll get that on the go. Now, you can see the next one here is this little explosion with an asterisk. This shows that we are in war. If we click it, we can see the war breakdown. If we can see the attackers and the defenders on this. Uh, yeah, the attackers on the left, defenders on the right. You can see allies not in war. You can see the war goal. And you can also see the war contribution. You can also see the breakdown of the number of armies you have versus your enemy. But you don't get the consolidated number at the bottom, which is a shame. You can also see how many people have died here. Since there's not much else going on here at the moment, we're going to move straight on. Alright, free civilian factories. If I click this, this opens up the constructions menu, which is in fact this little one here with the um, digger. This shows here that we've got 8 of 20, we've got 12 factories available for construction. You can see we get zero from trade and we own 20 factories, which is awesome. Now, um, these are civilian factories we are talking about here, not military factories. Civilian factories are used for building and for trading. So if you want to build lots of um, military factories, 
have lots of civilian factories to build them. If you want to build lots of, well, if you want to trade for goods, have civilian factories in reserve to trade away. For whenever you trade for goods, the country you are trading to receives the factory and you receive the goods. So if you trade with a nation, say the USA, buying their oil, you will spend one factory to receive eight oil and the US will receive a factory instead of having that oil. It's all pretty straightforward. Now you can also see here the construction speed. If you've got any bonuses there, you can see um, what it does. All right, consumer goods. There's a default amount of the total number of factories in your nation that will be kept aside for building consumer goods like toasters or the like. This is stuff that's, uh, it's, there's different laws within your country that you can activate to change the amount. For instance, you can see there that partial mobilization says 20%. That means we need 20% of the total number of factories to um, be just building consumer goods. You can see how many you need right here. You can see how many we're trading away here. And you'll be able to see how many, if you hover over here, you've got three. Now, a building, which is what we're going to be doing here, is used to build other things. So, a civilian factory, we are going to build more civilian factories. Let's build a civilian factory in Emilia Romana. Romanga, sorry. And Abruzzi. Now, if you have a look here, we've got where we first started building it. It has 12 of 15, and it's got little arrows that are moving rapidly across. That shows that it's currently being built, and you can see the breakdown of how much is being built versus how much is still to go. We've currently spent 0 of 7,200 build points on this, and every day it'll be adding 12 times the factory output. So 12 times 5 is 60. So every day we'll be adding 60 to it. You can also see that we've got the construction speed modified by limited exports, which is this up here. We can see that the plus 5% will add 5 on top of that. So if we have a look again, we can actually see that construction speed is in fact 63 out of si uh, instead of 60. So the output from the 12 factories is 60 and it's then modified plus 5% giving us 63. So every day at midnight it will add, well not midnight, 1am, it will add 63 build points to that construction. Now, if there's a combat going on in the province, building is suspended and the factories that are being used to build there are immediately moved down. Now, next thing is build order. You can see here at the top, I've got the factory and it's going 1215 and the one beneath it is at 015. A little bit annoying, it may seem, but uh, you can't spread these out at all between. So you can't have six working here and six working here. You don't really want to, but yeah, it'd be nice to have the option to. Just so that I could say as a smaller nation, have two things building in parallel, but it doesn't make too much of a difference at all. Now, if you want something else built faster, for instance, let's say I want this one at Abruzzo, Abruzzo finished before the one here. I can click this moving it up a step and now it is the one that is receiving the 12 or 15 factories instead of the one in Amelia. So Abruzzo is now the one being built faster. Now the types of things that can be built like this are you got infrastructure. This is the stuff that allows your troops to move from one province to another. It allows goods to move through and it affects speed and recovery rate. You can build air bases. The higher the airbase, the more planes can be shoved into um, the airbase without any penalties. Anti-air, this stuff will allow you to be bombed and not suffer as badly. You've got military factories. This will produce your military goods like guns, uh, tanks, anything related to the armed warfare. 
You've got your naval dockyards. These will build your ships. Synthetic refinery, like I said, this will add um, production of oil and rubber to a province. Rocket test sites, you'll build rockets, nuclear reactors. Only one's allowed in a province at a time, in any one province. For instance, I could build one here, but I wouldn't be able to build a second one on top. I'd have to build it in another province. But this, once you've fully researched it, will allow you to build nuclear warheads. You can also build naval bases. The higher the naval base, the more goods can go through, which is great. If you land in a place with a very poor naval base, you're not going to be able to supply many men. So be wary of that. You can also build forts. Forts are exceedingly powerful, so I'd recommend if you know you're going to be on the defensive instead of on the offensive, put a few port, uh, forts in very strategic locations, like in mountains and the like, and it'll make defending so much easier. We've also got coastal forts. If you expect to be attacked or you've got people walking over a strait, use a coastal fort. A coastal fort will knock 15% of their attack off, which is great. And this button here will convert um, factories. You can switch a military factory to a civilian factory or a civilian factory to a military factory no, with this button. Click it, you can uh, click on one of them and it will begin converting to it. Okay, so as you can see, you can minimize it so you've got a bit of view, uh, better view while you do that. But yeah, that's the constructions tab. As you can see, we're now building things, so let's move on to the next thing. All right, free military factories. We have military factories that aren't producing much. That's all well and good, but every day you don't build something, it's a day wasted, essentially. So, one thing you can see is that we need 2,700 guns. Guns, grenades, and other equipment like that for our normal infantry and the like. Infantry equipment is the backbone of any armed force. Just about every unit type requires it. So having a good amount of infantry equipment being produced will make sure that any needs that arise or any new divisions or anything similar to that has the materials it needs to continue. It uses... Uh, steel to produce which is this little thing over here and what we're going to do is nice and quickly we're going to move that um, up to here you can add and remove factories by clicking in these boxes each line can have up to 15 factories assigned this is especially important for say dockyards so that you can see how quickly you can churn out battleships and the like you can have only 15 assigned to it at a time so you have essentially a minimum time it has to be built. But you can have as many lines as you like of that type of thing. I'll go over that in a moment. We've got, now we're gonna up this to at least eight factories. That should bring the military factory number closer to full, as you can see, 13 of 19. And we're also gonna need more support equipment. Ooh, often you're going to need a lot of support equipment. So we are going to move that to two. That'll give us 1.29 per day, which is great. Alright, we should probably build a few light tanks as well, so we'll increase that. We'll increase the motorized as well, and we'll continue building a bit of uh, close air support. So I've just added one to each of those. I've got some ships down below, and I'll go over that in a moment. Now if I have a look, we are actually not building any artillery, which I think is silly. Should always be building at least some sort of artillery because it's so useful. Now, what I did was I clicked on this, which gives you infantry and artillery type of equipment. So, and the next one over builds you tanks and armored variants. And after that is aircraft. So I want to build this artillery. Um, you can see here that it's going to immediately be put in the stockhouse. That's what this little um, thing means. And you can see the production efficiency here of the line. The gray shows how full it is. It is currently at 10%. And the red line shows how far it can improve. And you can see the cap, if you hover over, is 50%. So I'm going to want two of them. At the moment, you'll see its production rate is 2.1 per week. That will greatly increase. So we'll end up with about five times that. So about 10.5 a week. At the, at the efficiency cap of 
it should take approximately 35 weeks to spin up to that. Uh, about 30 weeks, sorry, to spin up to that. It's quite a while, so uh, it takes a long time to build up. If you don't have all the equipment or materials, which is listed on the side, then the growth is a lot slower, as is the amount you can uh, produce. For instance, if I go over to here, if I have a look at the light tank here, we uh, have no oil. As you can see here, the oil drop also has a little bit of a red flare around it, and the number itself is red. If you hover over it, it says we need two units for full efficiency, which is exactly the case. Now, in order to get this, I'll go over trading in a moment, but we'll need to trade away the factories that I talked about earlier for the goods, and we'll be doing that very soon. But for now, you can see that we produce 2.5 a week. I believe we can get a lot higher than that if we have all the material we need. Alright, we've also got some ships. We've got 6 of 11 dockyards. So, we should probably look to getting them built relatively quickly. So, we've got 5 spare. Let's get a couple of the battleships out nice and fast. We'll increase both of those to 3 and then we'll get the light cruiser here. Now, they will build... As you can see, it'll produce one, and then it will dis uh, that'll be it. And this one will also produce one, and then that will be it. The light cruiser here will produce one. The destroyer will produce two. And you'll produce one submarine. For now, since we don't want to have to change most of this, and this is only a tutorial not going into a lot of depth for a lot of it, we're going to move all of these down to infinite. Every time it produces one, this counter goes down by one, and when it goes from one to zero, it disappears. But if you move it to zero itself, it will uh, become infinite. So it'll just keep producing it as and automatically deploying them so that it can produce another one. So we'll do that for all of those. That way we can just leave it be for the moment. Okay, so that takes care of most of that. Building ships is just like building the equipment. You click, you choose, and then you build it. Straightforward. Now, let's have a quick look at this top section of the production. We've got the production efficiency cap. This is how high your production efficiency can go. This only applies to the military stuff, not the dockyards. Dockyards build the same pace no matter what. You've also got your factory output. Limited exports will show that we produce 5% extra because of that. Um, we've got our bomb vulnerability. We've got our production efficiency retention. This is when you switch a line over to a similar line, how much of your um, your production efficiency you'll maintain. So if I was to switch from say infantry weapons one to infantry weapons two, it will say that it will retain 0% will go back to 10% essentially. So it won't retain any of the growth that I've had here. But if I was to switch to... Uh, actually, no, that's not quite right. If I was to switch... Is it? No, this is bonus that um, you um, keep. If you switch to a similar line, you keep some of it. The exact numbers I don't have on me right now. Um, and this is the production efficiency growth. This is how fast this little bar here grows. The, the higher that one is, the better. Okay, let's quickly move on to the next thing, which is national focus. This is where you spend some of your power projection. This will automatically eat into one of your power projection per day, which is usually if you're playing on the normal difficulties. If you're playing on the hard difficulties, you might have to make a choice between going down a focus tree or not and just sitting on and generating some points. For now, we're going to go very simply into Ethiopian War Logistics. You can see here that you've got um, a bit of flavor text for the focus and you'll be able to see the effect down here. It'll add two infrastructure to a province three naval bases to a province and we'll do the same in another province there. It'll take 70 days, some of them take longer 
than others depending on um, what it is and where and whose tree it's in. So yeah, we'll do that and we'll start that. Once you begin this, you cannot stop it. Alright, next here we've got the uh, air wings. We have air wings that are deployed and we are at war and they don't have an order. That's going to be sitting there through most of this because we only really have one set of aircraft that are anywhere near being involved in a fight. By the way, this is Ethiopia, in case you weren't aware. The air wings themselves don't have a mission yet. We'll give them one very soon. But like I said, it's only down here, and I'll go into that probably in the next tutorial or the one after that. Okay, we have no divisions basic training. If we click that, it'll come up with a list of um, the recruit and deploy tab, which is this tank with the arrow down for another way for you to get there. Um, you can build units from here. You've got the division designer, which will allow you to design more divisions. I'll go into that in more depth later, but um, you've got the, uh, the set of default divisions for your nation. Italy starts with an infantry, a mountaineer, a light tank, a colonial um, division, and some cavalry. For now, what we're going to do is we are going to hit train here, and it will add a unit here. You can see over here, you can give this name if you like, so that all the units will drop out with that name. For instance, we could call this Italia. Yep, if we call that Italia, all divisions will end up with that. So you'll end up with 1.Italia, 2.Italia, etc, etc. You can see here, if you hover over, there's a slight bar of green here. That shows the amount of equipment that is, and material that is currently put aside for that. We've got 3% of the equipment, which is 21 guns, essentially. We've got 6,300 manpower, which we've immediately been able to fill, which is great. And we've got no support equipment put aside. So, we aren't ready to, say, deploy this division or anything at all yet. It doesn't have the gear to go out. Not only that, it hasn't been trained enough. A division can only be trained as high as it has percentage of supplies. For instance, if we were to get this up to 25% of the supplies, it could be trained up to 25%, no further. However, once you get it over 20% uh, by default, you are able to deploy with this button. This allows you to get men out into the field if you're desperate for the numbers but you don't have all of the gear, or you don't have time to train them all. Training takes time, a lot of time. So sometimes it's better just to say, if you're the Soviet Union being invaded by Germany, it's probably better to just begin deploying a bunch of the units and have them train on the battlefield. They will take a penalty to their ability to fight until they move up to the trained level of um, skill, but until then, they will be able to fill in gaps and they will fight like dirt mostly. So yeah, the Italia, the Italia division will now begin there. This will begin pulling supplies aside so that it can begin building that unit and reinforcing it. You've also got here the, um, the priority of reinforcements or upgrades. If you want reinforcements to come before upgrades, then you can slam that on high. If you want upgrades to go first, slam it on high. If you want your new men to be getting guns before the men that are out in the field, then you put that there. So it's just a simple click. You got three tiers of uh, the priorities. So you've got high, medium, and low. Very simple. Now, it's when I was first doing it, I uh, did training divisions. What I would do is I'd just train and hit that a bunch of times. Don't need to. It's actually a lot easier than that. You click there once, you get it over to the side, and then you hit this button here, and it will add a bunch of them down below in serial. You can also try build a certain number of them. For instance, we can build four lots of those men. So all those men are put aside to be built already, but the uh, materials for the next ones behind it won't be done until these ones are done. 
So it trains that division. Once it's full, it'll place that division down, and then you continue. Uh, then it will begin training the next division. So you get a good churn through of men, nice and effectively. Now this number here will uh, decide how many it builds up to. If you've got it on infinite, it will just keep building as long as it's got men and keeps dropping them out. Now, how do you put men down? Once they're fully trained, by default they won't deploy. If you see this little padlock here, you'll want to click that and you'll get a then abil the ability to click on any of the locations that are green. These are your core provinces. They are essentially everything about your nation by default. You can choose any province in there, which is good. For instance, right now we're going to uh, click on Bologna. Bologna. I, I am sorry I am butchering these names. And if you have a look, it'll say it is producing in this area. And if you hover over, it'll actually highlight the exact province. So it will automatically put the units, once they're fully trained, into the city, which is good. Now, to go into more detail, that padlock itself means you can deploy straight in under a field marshal or a general so that it can immediately be assigned to orders and units and all of that stuff. But we'll go into that once I go into building and designing your generals. Well, not designing the generals per se, but designing the armed compositions under generals. All right, what else is there? Ah, yes, insufficient resources. If we click that, this will bring up the trade menu. By default, it's this box with the arrows. That's the trade menu. If you pull it up, you can see a breakdown of your nation. You can see here how much material is supported, uh, is produced, how much is exported, how much you import, and how much of a surplus or a deficit you have. If you have a look here, we produce none, uh, no oil, we export none because we don't produce any, we don't import any, but we need 24. So we should probably import some oil. If you click on oil, down here, it'll give you a list of all the people that produce oil. Um, for now, we're gonna trade with the United States. You click on the United States, and you can see here they can export up to almost a thousand units of oil. We can trade for up to 96. We have 195 convoys, which is used for trading, as I said earlier and you can see how much we can buy and sell here now by default a factory will automatically uh, a single factory civilian factory traded away will buy you eight of a product assuming they have eight of the product to sell so if we want to fill our need which is 24 we need to trade away three civilian factories which is nice and easy you don't actually need to do any calculations of your own this button here if let's say we put it at zero Okay, um, I don't know how many we need. How many will we need? Click that and it'll immediately take it up so that your needed number is equal to the number you're trading for, which is great. Makes it so much easier and it's a lot faster to do. So we'll immediately begin that. Next hour, we will begin that trade. Okay, we export 25 aluminium, but nobody buys it. So technically we don't receive any factories. We need five rubber. We don't have any. If we click on rubber, we can begin trading. Let's say trade with the United Kingdom. Um, we can't trade for five because we can't, uh, cannot sell like quarter or split factories. So we trade for eight for one factory. So we'll end up with an excess of three, which is fine. Tungsten. We don't have tungsten. We don't produce any, which is no good. Actually, no, sorry. We do produce tungsten. We produce two of them, and we don't export any, we don't import any, and we um, don't have a surplus because we use exactly two for our artillery. Steel. This is the main backbone of any nation's army. You're going to usually need more steel than any other material. Thankfully, we produce a good number of it. We produce 96 steel. We export 24, but nobody buys it, so we don't get the factory. We import none, and we have a surplus of eight for our own use. Why are we um, exporting when we still need? That uh, sorry, chromium. We produce four, we export one, but we still need three. Why do we export when we still need? Because a fraction of your material is automatically set to be traded away 
whether you like it or not based on your um, nation's policies. If you've got free trade, it's 80% of all your material is immediately traded away and you are not able to get access to it. You can trade from other nations to fill the gap. Just because you're exporting doesn't mean you can't import, which is what we're going to need to do for the chromium. We need to get some chromium. So we are going to go to the Soviet Union. We're going to trade for one civvy factory just to make sure it's correct. Click that button and boom. As you can see, we now have trade going and we'll go into more detail in a moment. Uh, we've got a surplus for everything now. We're trading for it. So that'll disappear in the next hour. And that takes care of any everything on the immediate interface right now. So I'm going to call that there for the first episode. Next episode we are going to be going into unit counters, ships, planes, and all of that type of jazz. We'll begin understanding what we're looking at when we look at them. And then I should be going into more detail after that about army composition and setting front lines, beginning wars, starting orders and the like. But I hope you enjoyed this. Um, sorry it dragged on a bit, but the UI to begin with is probably the most important part to understand. So sorry about the long episode. It should be a bit shorter for the next ones, probably about 20 minutes. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Hydronum and I hope you've enjoyed this. Ta-ta for now.